Hey friend, good morning. So happy to be here. Um, <clears throat> still got a little bit of this cold, but I'm doing so much better. Um, I'm just thinking I should have grabbed a tissue just in case. So I might have to run and grab a tissue, but um, I am feeling so good. Um, feeling so good and energized today. Um, I wanted to share, oh, got a hair in my mouth. There we go. Um, I wanted to share a book that I started reading. I kind of took a break from reading books. Like I, I was reading, you know, like a book a week at least, um, at least. Um, and I kind of took a break from reading a bunch of books. I, I just had been reading so much that, um, I took uh, a break. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, Christine. Christina, it looks like I'm going to do the video today. I'm so excited. Um, thank you, Jesus. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what I'm excited about is I started reading this book. Um, it's called She is Free, and it's by Andy Andrew. Um, her and her husband are pastors up in New York, and it's really learn. It's it's talking about um, learn. It well, the subtitle is Learning the Truth About the Lies That Hold You Captive, and this is really about getting spiritually free. And so, um, we kind of um, we kind of get in these uh, traps, in these um, we're in like living in captivity. Um, and he, God wants to have us free. Okay, my mind is like in 80 different places this morning, guys. I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so excited. Christina says, yay, looking good. Good morning. Love your sweater and your hair looks great. Thank you, guys. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a sweater I've actually worn in a couple of videos that I've shot. I think it like hides. I don't have to worry about it because it, <laughs> it hides and stuff. Um, anyway, and yes, I wanted to give a shout out to Marie. I use her um, shampoo from Posh and there is no bad chemicals in it and it my hair really really loves it so I have I've been using it for like uh, I think about a week and my um, it's, it's giving so much more volume to my hair and I love it and I feel like it's more shiny I don't know okay I am really going down random trails today but I'm excited because I heard this um I heard this quote read this quote in this book and it gave me like a really big um, aha moment and I just want to share it with you she is talking about, um, okay, she just said, I'll just give you the quote. She says, what you dwell on, what you dwell on is what you dwell in. So what you dwell on is what you dwell in. And the verse that I thought about is from my favorite chapter in Psalm, Psalm 91. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So... Here's the, it answered that question for me. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high. I think from um, like salvation wise, when, when we dwell, um, when we dwell in the shelter of the most high, we are, we are resting and we are covered by Jesus's blood for salvation. But I think there is, as we live our daily lives, we can dwell in um, some other things, right? It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high. You can tell what you're dwelling in on a day to day basis by what you're dwelling on. Okay. So. I was thinking about what is the thing, what are the things that I tend to dwell on? Well, one, um, worry and fear, um, worry and fear. So I can just dwell on all the things that might happen, what could happen, what's going to happen, how it could go wrong. All of these things, I can tend to dwell on those things. And the, and what I'm dwelling in, what I'm dwelling in when I do that is myself because I'm relying on myself and how I'm going to handle that. And so when I'm dwelling on fear and worry and all the things that could happen, I'm dwelling in myself. And y'all, you don't want to dwell on yourself. That's sinking sand, right? That is sinking sand. And you're not, that's, that's not good. When you're in fear and worry, you, fear and worry, you will do all sorts of things um, that don't make sense. Um, oh my goodness. You can, you can make yourself crazy when you are dwelling in fear and worry. Dwelling on fear and worry. The other thing is um, anger and bitterness. Sometimes we can dwell on anger and bitterness. Who did what to you, why they did it, and you're going to hold a grudge. I heard from somebody on, um, I don't know if you've listened to the podcast, but it was, I talked about uh, the profile of Angry Anna who um, can't do what God wants them to do because they're holding on to um, bitterness. And I've heard some somebody from somebody and she says, I just tend to hold grudges on people. I hold grudges and I, I hold that against them. So if you're dwelling um, on how a person has hurt you, uh, what they might do, and you're thinking about how you're going to hurt them back or how you're going to ignore them a lot of times, you know, because 
you know, sometimes we're good Christian girls. We're not actually going to like say what's on our mind. We're just going to ignore the person and hurt them. Um, speaking to myself, of myself. But that is, again, dwelling. Um, when we're dwelling on that, we're dwelling in ourselves because we're relying on ourselves to carry out justice. And we say, they've hurt me and I'm going to take care of it and I'm going to take care of that justice and get them back. So, the verse says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Neither one of those things, when we're, when we're in fear, worry, bitterness, all of that, will bring rest. Does it? It does not bring any sort of peace. It brings um, the very opposite of peace. And um, so, I think we have to take a look about what we're dwelling on. And the things that we can dwell on and the things that we can stand on like a rock is God's promises. And... I think about just specifically those kind of two things that maybe it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But those are my two big things, so I'm going to share about those two things. The things that we have to dwell on in those circumstances is God's promises. One, I mean, two of the verses that, especially around fear and worry, is um, the promise that he will never leave me or forsake me. No matter what happens, he's going to be with me through it. And that was, I know I got a lot of freedom um when my kids were younger and I used to worry all the time about whether they were going to die or get sick or whatever. And I found a lot of freedom when I played that out in my mind. I'm like, okay, so what if they do? What if they do get sick? What if they do pass away? What, what if? And I played that out and the end of the game was that God's still with me. God would help just like he helps me parent with them. He would help me in my grief and he would help me, you know, in a sickness. He would be there with me. And that takes the fear away because I can do anything with Christ, right? I can do anything. And so that takes the fear and the worry away. And no matter what happens, um, God would lead us through. He's not going to leave us. And the other thing is that he is working all things together for good. That is another promise that I just stand on when I get to fear and worry is that no matter what happens, bad things are going to happen. We are in, I mean, just, I can't even hardly take the news anymore. Bad things are going to happen. Um, but somehow in some way in our lives, he is going to work things together for good. So we can rely on that. And that is when, so if you think about that again, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So if you begin to dwell on those promises, then you're dwelling in, um, you're dwelling in, God and that's where you find rest. That's where you find peace. Okay, so you think about the bitterness, anger when you are begin to dwell on God's promise. Um, Romans twelve nineteen says, "Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine; I will repay," says the Lord. When we begin to rest on that promise that God, who is a God of justice, will take vengeance, will repay. Um, he, we can rest. When we leave it in his hands, we can rest. Um, and there is no way in our little tiny minds of what we know how we really can administer, administer justice. We just don't know enough about all the situations, all the hearts, um, everything that's been going on to really um, administer justice properly. Only God can do that. And he is on the throne as the judge. And we cannot sit in his seat as judge because we don't know enough. We have to let him be the judge and let him take the vengeance and um, deal with that and deal with that person how it needs to be done with and we can we can rest and that's what brings rest so we're dwelling on that dwelling on that promise that we can leave it to God and that means we're dwelling um, in God and his promises and that's where that's what will bring the rest that's what brings rest is peace we don't have to uh, feel that anger and bitterness and um, hold that grudge because and then we can just rest and let him take care of it okay so I don't know. That was like a big thing for me is to think about what I'm dwelling on is what I'm dwelling in. What I'm dwelling on is what I'm dwelling in. And if I want peace in my life, and I think we all do, that's what we need to do. We need to dwell on his promises. Dwell on his promises. And that's how we're dwelling in God. Um, and he is a rock we can stand on. And his promises are true. He, God cannot lie. Um, God cannot lie. So he will do it. Okay, so I hope that brings some peace and rest as you think about that today. As you can see, I feel excited. I'm so excited today. I'm um, I'm excited that I'm not as sick as I was yesterday. Um, and I'm excited because I'm filming with Christina today for her vlog called She. Look it up on YouTube. And she was on the podcast last week. And um, yes, so what, what time is it? Oh, it's already 7.37. Okay, I think I said good morning to Marie and Christina and um, 
Good morning, Stephanie. It looks like you joined. A couple more people joined, and for some reason, I'm not seeing your name, so I'm sorry. I don't. I'm sorry. If you want to say hi, I will say hi back to you. <laughs> I just don't see your name. Um, I don't know. Facebook, I, feels, I feel, is a little funky on how it does some of this commenting and whatnot. Um, so, anyway, um, yes. Okay, there's no more, nobody more. I'm not saying that right. Nobody else is commenting. <laughs> um, so, hi to you that are watching and are going to watch. Um, I hope you have a lovely... Um, a lovely Thursday and we will see you back tomorrow guys. Have a good day. Bye.